Sue Perkins, practice those scales. But will she be good enough at the piano to give a recital at the Cheltenham Music Festival? The UK premiere of First Love on Sky Arts 1 HD. Taylor's After Dark. <laughs> Romance with character. Ah, Joanna. When we met, there was an instant attraction, and I thought our love would last forever. But like so many relationships, it just soured. I don't know, she started making demands on my time and made me feel guilty for staying away. It got repetitive and boring, stressful. It felt more like a chore than a delight. I'm Sue Perkins, and now 25 years since we split, I'm returning to my first love. This place is one of my most favorite places in the entire world because it's a sort of oasis of calm in the middle of the city. I have a sort of quite a split personality in that one part of me wants total silence, but then the other half of me just is a clown. Good girls. The stuff I do on telly is quite mad. And then I come home and the door's shut and it's a little bit of music on and a bath. The music's a huge part of my life. It's how I become calm. I started playing piano when I was about six. And I started because my mum told me I was going to start playing the piano. I love the drama of it. It's very special, I think. But sitting down at a piano, I just associate with being frightened. It's a combination of two things, I think. Not feeling I really know what I'm doing, but also seeing what it's like when people do it properly. I'm feeling I, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm no good. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm a perfectionist. And the thing is, anything that I, that I did when I was at school that I, I realised I couldn't do well, I just stopped doing. And I think that's something that sort of haunted me through my life, really. It's, it stopped me doing so many things, because I thought, well, I can't, I'm incapable, I'm stupid. I'm, you know, there's, I, I have sort of enough wells of self-loathing to make most processes quite difficult, but particularly playing music. After 25 years, Sue is about to face her fear by taking up the piano again. But that's not the only challenge that lies ahead. Mentored by an international virtuoso, she's going to be performing at a major classical music festival in just four months' time. I want to sort of reclaim sitting at a piano and, and playing music from the clutches of being a sort of frightened kid doing dull scales. Because I just don't think it has to be like that. Welcome to Just a Minute. I get very, very nervous about playing the piano because there are right notes and there are wrong notes. And in my performing career, there's no such thing as the wrong thing to say. I just don't get nervous. And the subject is my favourite composer. 60 seconds starting now. I am torn between Benjamin Britten, the great classical giant of the 20th century, and Mike Batt, composer of the Wombles theme tune. <laughs> Remember, you're a Womble. I was a really, really shy child. I had this slight stammer. There was something about music which meant, you know, I had a relationship to something that was um, not awkward. Um, whereas outside of that, I felt that a lot of my life was awkward. And I suppose the idea of music being the major communicating tool was taken over by poems and stories and, and all these things that I was asked to read as a way of, uh, as a way of improving my speech. And so suddenly, for me, I think imprinted in my head was the best way to communicate is verbally. And can there be anything more beautiful in the world than love? Uh, Sue Challenge. Yes, there can. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is, Sue? Mindless sex. <laughs> <laughs> when there's, there's no words, you, um, you have to resonate something more profound, and you, it, has, it has to come from a different part of you, and that's the part that's probably a bit scary to show, which is the sort of vulnerable part. The man who's going to help Sue face her nemesis is Britain's most celebrated pianist for generations, Paul Lewis. With regular performances across the globe from Chicago to Tokyo, his cycles on Mozart, Beethoven and Schubert are internationally acclaimed. He's meeting Sue for the first time at the Royal College of Music in Kensington. I don't know what to expect at all. I think it's important to go into this without any kind of preconceptions, and I'm sure she's probably feeling the same. Being mentored by Paul is a very far cry from being taught by Mrs Green with her one tooth and spectacular sibilance, so I, I am very scared. Don't ask me what qualities you need to be a great pianist, I don't know. 
that the main thing is just to be honest about what you're doing, to love the music that you play, to try to express what is so incredible about it. I mean, anybody can do that. My biggest fear is the fear that's going to be realised immediately, which is that I'm going to be made to acknowledge the fact I'm no good. I'll set the alarms off when I go in. That's my worry. They have some sort of talent alert. And the fact that I haven't got any will immediately breach security and people will remove me from the building. This is like school. This is scarily like school. <clears throat> Except at this school there aren't people sort of twanging each other's buttocks with rulers and swearing and using whoopee cushions and drinking lager in chemistry lessons. Everybody at this school is a prodigy and I feel very out of place. <clears throat> Okay. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good. Welcome to the most challenging hour of your life, I think. I doubt it. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is I he immediately so. sort of flushed and scared by the name Steinway? That's, is that bigger than normal, or have I just... No, used, that's... No more keys, no more octaves, no... That's... That's pretty normal, yeah. OK. Well, the piano is an imposing presence about it, you know, that, that you have to conquer somehow. Oh, do you see, I just feel intimidated even sitting down. What have you got at home? What piano have you got? I, well, I've, I rent a piano. That, that, that's my commitment to, to you know, is I can... I feel that I'm not as good enough player to own one, so I rent one. Well, I saw the piano there, I was just immediately intimidated, and it was... It's just... I just look scary. They're, like, really funereal. It doesn't scream love me. I'm going to do a thumbnail sketch of every piano lesson I've ever been to. <clears throat> She can certainly move her fingers. She might be a little bit rusty, but I think that the dexterity is clearly there. And you know what? I could do all of those. I couldn't play you a tune. Did you do grades? Yes, I did all of them. So you got to grade eight? Yes. Uh huh. What was it that, that led you to, to stop lessons or stop playing? Do you remember? Just I didn't enjoy it. Right. I love music. I absolutely love it. I used to go to, to recitals and I used to go and listen to other people play. I used to have really scratchy old vinyl with all the greats playing. And I couldn't translate that incredible vaulting sort of passion and interest into anything that I was doing because I'd, I'd been sort of over-formalised in terms of my education. How do you feel about the prospect then of, of performing somewhere in a few months' time? Oh, terrified. I mean, just terrified. But I've also got to tell you where you're going to be playing. Oh, God, yeah. yes. Yeah. I may well be sick now. OK. <laughs> in four months, Sue will be performing at the Cheltenham International Music Festival in front of 500 ardent classical music fans. Established in 1945, Cheltenham is one of Britain's oldest music festivals with a huge reputation among music lovers and artists around the world. The Cheltenham International Music Festival is a very important musical event. It's high profile, a lot of great musicians go there. For anyone who plays there, it's, it's a fairly pressured event. So a place where people come specifically to hear music. Yes. Flocking, some might say. Yeah, which is great, because you've got an audience there who's really into music. And so who know the difference between a good note and a bad note. What, what sort of piece do you imagine yourself playing? I've never been very good with sort of rom the romantic stuff, cos I've never been... I think that's where the real skill is, actually, when something is slower and more thoughtful. Mm. And that's when you have to make more of an investment. So the hands are flying around, well, it's technically very difficult. Yeah. I, I don't have to put so much of myself in, I guess. You can almost hide behind it. Yeah. A bit. How are you with Beethoven sonatas? Perhaps the slow movement of the pathetique sonata. I think the slow movement of the pathetique sonata, it's, it's a wonderfully beautiful piece of music. But it's also, it's a challenge for a professional pianist uh, in terms of balancing and technical control. It, it's incredibly expressive and I think there's, there's so much music in there. OK, that sounds frightening. But does it's a great it, piece that, of music. There's, there's a section later on. A 
in order to convey what's in the music, you need a lot of technical control. Oh! Ah! Forget about playing with your fingers. Think about playing with your elbow. So it's kind of, you, your elbow's doing all that. If you've been used to sitting down at the piano and sort of battling with the scales and exercises and that kind of thing, this, this is a totally different approach. You know, you can't approach a piece like this in that way at all. It's important just to have a sense of the sound that you're trying to create. You know, if you, if you love a certain piece of music and you have an idea of what you want to convey with that, you have an idea of the sound. And yeah. to, to kind of believe in that, I know this sounds a bit vague, but to, you know, to, to believe in that sound, you're halfway there. I want to forget the scales and forget the structure, and I want to I see, I see the bigger picture, which is, how does it make you feel? You know, what's the line of the music? Where's it taking you? Where's it building towards? Those are much more important questions. Wow, we've got our work cut out for us. It's, this is good, though. This will, be like, this will be like sort of therapy and music at the same time, which will be great. And hopefully this will bring back some love. It's like revisiting a bad experience and making it clean again and nice. I feel a little bit more resolved, actually. Which is not to say I'm not frightened about what's coming, but um, I sort of think what will happen now will be on a very different level to the way that I studied before. Ah. Opus 13, pathetic. At least that's how I'm wording it for my particular rendering. Let's have a look. Oh, it looks horrible. But look at it. It sounds so mellow when Paul plays this. And confronted with the reality of... Ah, angry ants. Ah. It's my worst nightmare, really, slow music. Because the slow music is where you have to kind of... You can't clown around and you... It's just... Look, we've all felt this before. You have to kind of let a bit out and that's dreadful. I'm very, very private and I sort of... I came, came from a very sort of loving home, but one where... We didn't talk about emotions. And I get very shy and very awkward when things get very emotional and um, I go very red and look at the floor. Even when someone's been in the past, someone sort of said, "Oh, you know, said I love you," or something. The first time I sort of, <coughs> well, well, good for you. That's 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 your misfortune. And I always try to make it, you know, it's just like a, you know, it's not saying I don't feel it, but I just don't know how to. I just not. I don't know. I just. It, I suppose it because it means you'd have to lose. You'd have to lose control for a second. I'm going to go and I'm going to practice. And I think that's the easiest bit done. What I'm going to find terrible and really difficult is putting the emotion into it. And then on top of that, actually going and performing it to an audience that I'm terrified.